words. He brought a young girl out of a coma and gave her back her life. Each of us in our own way seemed to find a personal message in the songs of the late Roy Orbison. Pretty Woman to Run and Scared or Roy's classic hit, Crying. There was an emotional edge to his songs that seemed to stay with us long after the music stopped. For this young woman in Reading, England, the power of Roy Orbison's voice will be with her until the day she dies. It's the voice and the the um, the feeling he puts into it. It really makes me want to cry every time I hear it. For Michelle Booth, Roy's voice would come to mean life itself. fully understand the importance of Orbison and Michelle's life, we have to go back to a railway track outside Reading and to a March day in 1978. Michelle, then a 15-year-old schoolgirl, was brutally beaten and thrown from a speeding train, left for dead. For two weeks, she would remain in a coma so deep that doctors feared she might never come out. In desperation, Michelle's parents reached out for a miracle. They thought it would be a good idea to get, to like trigger off the brain waves, to get some spark of recognition. And by doing that, they suggested that Roy Orbison's music would be a very good idea because I really love Roy Orbison. Almost from the day she was taken to the hospital unconscious, they had played Roy Orbison's songs by her bedside. She was Orbison's biggest fan in the world, she had often said. But as the days passed without sign of recovery, it became clear something more was needed. A simple request was made across the Atlantic. Could Roy send Michelle a personal message? Orbison wasn't the kind of guy who needed to be asked twice. Dear Michelle, this is Roy Orbison. Anytime someone likes to listen to my music, the things that I sing, and songs that I write, then that pleases me very much. His immediate response even made London news broadcasts. I'll be coming to England fairly soon, and if you will write me and let me know your address, then I'll write back to you and let you know when I'm coming. Roy's message was simple and generous. Michelle's parents, indeed, all of Britain, waited and prayed. Roy's widow, Barbara, recalled how concerned Orbison was for the young girl he had never met. I know that immediately he uh, went to the tape recorder and he gave her a personal message and we sent it to England. And I think by Roy sending the tape, regardless of what the outcome would have been, you know, he felt that he at least did his best to make a difference, you know? And then, on the Tuesday of the second week of Michelle's coma, it happened. Michelle Booth opened her eyes, and then she squeezed the hand of her doctor. I'm not sure how it worked. I'm not sure how the brain works or anything like that, but I just know that while I was in the coma, I knew that Roy Orbison was speaking to me. And maybe that was there, and the fact that he'd also invited me backstage to meet him when I came out of the coma. Maybe that was part of the reason why I made such an effort to, 
pull myself out of the coma and to sort of face the world because I knew that I was going to one day meet Roy Orbison, my dream. Months later, Roy Orbison would take time to visit the girl whose life he had changed. I remember I was so excited that morning, I just couldn't keep still, just flitting around here, there and everywhere, just waiting to see Roy Orbison turn up. And sure enough, about lunchtime, the big car drew up at the front, at the front gate and who should step up with Roy Orbison and his brother Sam. I thanked him for helping me, thanked him very much for the tape, gave him a huge great big hug and kiss. And then we sort of settled down. It was as if I'd known him all my life. He was such an easy person to talk to. Roy's widow Barbara knows the kind of man Roy Orbison was to all those around him. Music actually can heal. Today, Michelle is happily married. But her taste in music hasn't changed. The name of her favorite singer hasn't changed. There will only ever be one idol, only one, Roy Orbison. I'd like to just tell him that although he's, he's really gone, he's still there in my heart. He'll always be there and his songs are what I always play and that I still love him forever. I'll never be blue, my dreams come true.